Hello, this is Teacher Ronald. I want to welcome you to this video. In the previous video, we looked at the detailed analysis of the title Devil on the Cross. And if you didn't see that video, I want to encourage you to go and subscribe to our channel LELL, -E -L, Learn English Language and Literature. You don't, you don't have to miss any video that we post in our channel. For this video, we're going to look at character and characterization in the novel devil on the cross stay tuned as we look at that very topic when we're looking at character and characterization the very first character to come to our mind is actually jacinta waringa that is actually the protagonist in this novel jacinta waringa is one person that we meet at the very beginning of the novel after we have interacted with the prophet of justice the voice that uh, proclaims is going to take us through the very sad story of Waringa and after that we meet Waringa. She's introduced to us as a Kenyan young woman who has been seriously struggling in the wake of Kenyan independence. The instability of the government and the struggling economy are not abstract for Jacinta's life especially as she grows up. Her boyfriend is Betroyo. After she narrates the story about Hadnayo to interact sexually with Boskihara, is another blow to her that makes her not to even know how to move on in life. She's therefore at the very beginning characterized as being suicidal. For her suicidal expression, when she decides to leave her landlord's place after she has been dismissed and sent out of, uh, of, of her rent, she decides to move and take her life just by landing into a speeding uh, bus. But we remember that this is not the first time. We again in the flashback are told that previously the Waringa had tried this. After she had been dumped by the rich old man from Gorica, she goes to the railway station where she wants to commit suicide. But before going to the railway station, actually she tries committing suicide in one of the secondary schools. She wants to, f to fall into, to drown into a swimming pool. Surprisingly, the person who saves her the swimming pool is the person who saves her life, even in the morning when she's going to land into her train. For this very present one, where we are uh, best on to say she is actually very suicidal, is when she now wants to try it out uh, on one of the roads in Nairobi, that are so busy and wants to land herself into a running, a speeding uh, vehicle or a bus. But then there's a hand that saves her, which hand later will land is actually one of the liberators of Kenya and is a student leader that we're going to learn later. At the beginning of the story, Oringa is actually seen as a victim of exploitation. She has been moving in the streets of Kenya previously looking for a job and every office that she enters she is asked to offer sex before she can get a job. So she is considered to be a victim of exploitation, especially sexual exploitation. When we go to Boskihara's company, particularly we may look at sexual exploitation because it's what comes out clear at the beginning that Boskihara wants to sleep with the Waringa. But when she refuses, of course an excuse of coming late is one thing that we can look at, but it is just an excuse. But when the Muturi comes up to explain how they are exploited as workers, and because Waringa has been working in the same place, we can say Waringa is also financially exploited even in that company. When we just leave out sexual of exploitation. So when we continue, we can actually also characterize Waringa as being a very pathetic character. When she goes through challenges, her first solution is to kill herself. This is something that readers really wouldn't recommend that a person who is challenged should do. So because of her suicidal cases, we can conclude that Waringa is actually very pathetic. When we look at uh, this statement from the novel, Waringa was convinced that her appearance was the root cause of all her problems. Whenever she looked at herself in the mirror, she thought herself very ugly. 
This is very pathetic. What she hated most was her blackness. So she would disfigure herself or her body with body her creams. We're going to look at these creams as uh, what we call a uh, ambi. Okay, in Kenya they actually call them. Hmm? These are the body lightening, uh, I mean skin lightening creams. And these days I think we have carolite and others. So she could say um, that uh, that which is born black, oh, she, she forgot that that which is born black will never be white. Now her body was covered with light and dark spots like the gene one. Her hair was. Is it, this statement from the novel can actually explain Waringa. Imagine that Waringa's skin, just like Gaturia praises her, has grown into that depth of darkness. But the darkness that is making the skin more soft, or is making it softer and uh, more tender. Ironically, this is what Waringa doesn't like in the beginning of the novel. So her salvation has just come. But it still describes her beauty. She's extremely beautiful. 
Your darker eyes shine more brightly than the stars at night. Your cheeks are like two fruits, riper than the blacker berry. Your hair is so black and soft and smooth that all men feel like sheltering from the sun in its shade. Your voice is sweeter than the sound of a thousand and one musical instruments. When you go to page 225, this is what you will find. So, Waringa can only accept this because she has changed. Mentally, she has accepted that what is black want to become white. However, her pessimism doesn't die because in the biggest part of the novel, from the beginning, she is such a pessimistic character. According to the comment by, by Gaturia, Waringa seems to have gone through a transformation to understand that problems exist and she alone can fight them. She is a changed woman. The omniscient narrator in the last chapters wonders what happened to our Waringa, a changed woman, and this is what he says. But when Waringa was happy and forgot to worry about the, the, the fading whiteness of her teeth and about the blackness of her skin and laughed with all her heart, her laughter completed this armed people. This is what the omniscient narrator says actually in the beginning of the book. So at the end, we're going to see that she, she changes because this is what happens at the beginning. She does not recognize and appreciate what she is. And at the end, where the missionary takes us through, she will see that she actually has changed. Now, here we're still analyzing what she is before. Her voice was as smooth as perfume. Her eyes shone like stars in the night. Her body was a feast for the eyes. Often when she walked along the road without self-consciousness, her breasts swaying gently like two ripe fruits in the breeze, Waringa stopped the men in their tracks. This is ironically what Waringa doesn't recognize. So, all of this would really bring her to such a low self esteemed woman, very pessimistic and unappreciative. Her beauty beats many people. At Gatoria's home, all people are mesmerized by a girl dressed simply, but yet so beautiful. This is what the novel says on page 242. As she walked, Walunga appeared to be the child of beauty. Can you imagine? Mother of all beauties, just created by the creator of the twins. Elegance and beauty. Okay, this is at the end of, of the novel, of course, and she, she seems to have changed. She has appreciated her natural color and her natural appearance. So when she goes to Gatorian's home to visit the parents, she's actually a very changed woman. Waringa is also very determined, however, courageous and also hardworking. When she finally accepts her fate of pregnancy, Waringa patiently gives birth and leaves Amboi with her mother in Morocco. What does she do? She goes to school. The determination of the girl, which is so rare that after giving birth, she would suggest and even get ways of getting back to school. At the moment when someone uh, should render her dream finished, Waringa moves and goes back to a polytechnic school and goes to do a course. This is a course that some of the men dream of and some men have called it a male course, the course of engineering and she becomes a mechanic end of it all. This is the determination that we're talking about. Her courage is also portrayed in the way she responds to men who think she and other women at large can never be engineers. She speaks to them, helps them to do work they had failed to do before. And some of those who insist that uh, she's just a male woman, she kicks. Let's look at what the novel says here. He felt a lamp block his throat and he stammered out, I don't know. Waringa told him that the unpleasant noise was being caused by a loose bolt that joined the conrod to the crankshaft. The people around started clapping their hands. Others went away, shaking their heads, saying, really, I have yet to see anything to beat that. So, our woman 
or our women have acquired that much learning, the other workers welcomed her as one of them and they began working with her. So this is the courage that we're talking about, that she will stand to challenge what men think women cannot do. And when she comes to help the, the men, they just accept her and she joins them. At the end of the novel, we also see the courage that Warunga presents. She stands as, as, uh, as a judge to execute Mr. Gitaki, the father of, of Gaturia, or who the person we also know as the rich old man from Warunga. What does she say? Okay, Warunga was standing exactly where she had stood since she had entered the room. She began to speak like a people's judge about to deliver his judgment. You snatch her of other people's lives. Do you remember the game you and I used to play? The game of the hunter and the hunted? After this, actually, Orunga executes a rich old man from Gorika without any fear. She doesn't even think about what Gatria is going to think. This is Gatria's father. But she knows if this is the man who exploits her at the beginning, she has to execute him. Her hard work is also commendable. A lazy woman would have given up on her dreams of becoming an engineer. Even as she pursues her course, we are told Waringa uses between different jobs to raise fees for herself. This is very commendable. Let's look at what Enova says. During that first year, Waringa did not get enough rest. When she was not at school, she was at her books. And when she was not bent over the box, she was busy trying to earn money from old jobs here and there. And when she was not doing any of this, she was attending judo and karate classes at the Kenya martial arts area. Ringa had resolved that she should be able to defend herself and stand on her own in every situation. This is the point where we say that Waringa is actually a hardworking woman. She doesn't want to be dependent on, 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 on Gaturia who has become now a boyfriend. Actually, we are told that when Gaturia offers to, to, to pay for her school fees, she refuses because she wants to be independent. That one can bring in another character trait of being an independent-minded woman. She stops being dependent on the men when she is dealing with a rich old man from Gorika in her senior troop. Once she's betrayed, it is done. Okay, it is also Oringa who helps uh, widen her parents' house to a bigger one. They live in two uh, years after the incidents in the, in the cave. It is a shock to those who think a girl or a girl child cannot do such a thing. All this communicate her hard work. Okay. So when you reach, uh, when you read here, you will actually see that uh, that is also found in a novel and just follow up with the novel and you see. Waringa, just like another prominent character in the novel, uh, especially like Wangari, is a freedom fighter. Okay? She tries to, to, to deny each and every sexual uh, attempt that uh, different bosses bring onto her. When, for example, Boskihara intends to, to put her uh, down as a woman to have sex with, with her, she tells Boskihara she's not the kind of, of, of women that Boskihara wants to lay beds with. And then at the end of it all, she executes a rich, rich old man from Goreka for having exploited a girl like her, meaning that she could have, he could have ex exploited many other girls like that, and therefore she wants to put a full stop on such incidents. Waringa is also very helpful, very sympathetic and considerate. While in the matter too, we remember very well that Wangar doesn't have money to take her to Imorok. But because of the driver who is a money worshipper, Waura does not allow to listen to such. It breaks the matter too very suddenly that the, the man in black glasses, that is Muriru Amkrai, is almost thrown out. He could have died. 
and insists that Wangari should get out. But because of the helpful nature, the sympathy and the consideration that Waringa has onto others, he, she is one of those people who offer to contribute money as a transport fare for Wangari. The encounters with the devil in her dreams on page 13, the voice that speaks to Waringa at the golf course, make her a symbolic savior of others. So Waringa can actually also be taken as a symbolic savior of others. In her dream at Kaka Heavenly Massage and uh, Hairdressing Salon, Waringa is drawn back to the dream she used to have while she was still at secondary, a dream of the devil being crucified. And that's the very dream that we see. The author chooses her to sit in the shoes of Jesus in the Bible, the savior of Kenya. Later on in the novel, she has an encounter with the devil at the golf course. This is a direct uh, parody, especially of the, of, of the biblical devil that attempts to, 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 to besiege Jesus, to, to seduce him so that he can belong to the devil. So when you read here, you're also going to see that the voice is actually like that in the Bible. And this one is yours for... Now, in the conversation, especially that we can see up here, like the devil accepts being an exploiter, the, the oppressor, the liar and the grabber, Waringa is shown whatever that is happening and that, and that which is to happen in the future, especially by the it is therefore up to her to save those in danger, like Mirelu Wamukirai. Unfortunately for her, she is late for almost everything. So, the prophecy of the devil is to be fulfilled. And that's how we are able to lose Mirelu Wamukirai. Now, one way or the other, therefore, we can say that Waringa in everything, especially from the beginning of the book to this point. But after the cave, after the events in the cave, Warunga becomes a very changed woman, just like we've discussed before. She becomes very changed, very courageous, very hardworking, very determined, and she even falls in love, true love. She really has love for, for Gatoria. The only fear she has is coming because of, of, of what has happened to her in the previous years. But we can congratulate she's also a very loving character. Okay. Just yeah, stay tuned. In the next episode, we're going to look at um, the character traits or character characterization of other characters like Wangari and Agatoria. Thank you very much. Stay tuned.